All right, good morning, guys. I am going to record your science lesson for today. We were going to do this whole thing together, but with me being out having to go to the doctor, that didn't happen. So, here's the plan. I am going to I am going to read all this to you just like I normally would, or you can read it to yourself. That's your choice. But I'm going to discuss things on here and provide answers to those. And uh, so that I know that you've done it all, at the end, you will have to complete that last page. I want to say it's page 240, 241. I'm not 100% sure right now. I'll double check at the end. But I am going to read this to you for those that want and probably should listen. And it's 10 o'clock here tonight on Wednesday. So I'm doing this for you, not for me. So all right, just sit back and mark the answers in your book. That's all you need to do. All right, so how does the Earth's surface change quickly? We talked about how it changed slowly with the erosions and everything else and weathering. Now we're going to talk about how it does it quickly. So it says, find the following answer to the question in this lesson. They, these used to be living plants, but now they are dead. The ground is covered in ash. What might have caused these changes? Okay. Lesson vocabulary. List the terms in the back. As you learn about each one, make notes in an active glossary. Well... You've had these vocabulary words up there already. They are in the back of the room. Okay, so just turn your head and look. But they are earthquake, volcano, and flood. Earthquake, volcano, and flood. Those are your three vocabulary words for this lesson. Again, y'all need to be paying attention because your test is next week, and these are very important things, especially when throughout this topic. Pause when you need to, but I got to move on. Now, let's shrink this up. Earthquake shaken up. Earth's surface begins to shake. The ground splits, buildings crack, and some fall. What's happening? Skip it down. An earthquake is a shaking of the Earth's surface that can cause land to rise and fall. Most earthquakes are too weak to be felt, but strong earthquakes can call, cause big change to Earth's surface. What causes earthquakes? Earthquakes can happen because of movements in Earth's crust. They occur mostly in places where two pieces of crust meet. Pieces may push together, pull apart, or slide past each other. The map shows places where the earthquakes are most likely to happen. So it's going to be on the next page. But those pieces underneath the land are actually called, you'll learn this later, but I'm going to tell you, they're called tectonic plates. Okay? So here's the map. Where most of this happens, the red, as you can see, is the highest risk. We're down right here in the green. We have very low risk of anything happening to us, any kind of earthquake happening to us. So that's this is what we call the legend, what you go by. So you can see that a lot of it happens here in Memphis, which is, this is Tennessee, Indianapolis, St. Louis, and a whole bunch on the side of California and Alaska. And Hawaii, that's just straight up red. Those happen a lot there. Okay, so I ask you, does San Francisco or Boise have a higher earthquake risk? So Boise is right here. It's in green. And right here is San Francisco. That's in orange or red. So the one the highest risk is actually San Francisco. Okay, so that's what you're going to put. San Francisco is California. All right, it says find Dallas and Miami on the map. Which city has a lower earthquake width? Lower earthquake risk. Apologies. All right, so Miami's down here in Florida. It's in the blue. It's the lowest risk possible. And here's Dallas. It's just barely in the green. So let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you. You can see that. Oh, I don't like this book thing. So if you can look right here, it's in the green. So the one that has the actually highest risk, although it's still very low is Dallas. Oh, wait. It says which has a lower earthquake risk. I'm sorry. That's Miami. Why are you not working? Some reason doesn't want me to type. So, but that is Miami. See if I can do this here. Oh, me and All right. So, first century San Francisco. Second one is Miami. Sorry about the technical difficulties. All right, volcano, feel the heat. 
What is as big as a mountain with so much smoke that you can see it from space? So that's, I mean, that's insane. You can see it from space. This is very cool. A volcano is a mountain made of cooled lava, ash, or other materials from eruptions. Like earthquakes, volcanoes are caused by movements of the Earth's crust. In some places, one piece of crust slides underneath another. This causes rock to undergo, causes rock underground to melt. This melted rock is called magma. It moves upward. It moves upward. So that's what comes out. If it reaches an opening, it will erupt onto Earth's surface. That just means it's going to explode, like you see in this picture here. It's not slowly oozing, it's psh, erupting out. The melted rock is then called lava. As the lava cools, it will get hard, and some volcanoes grow larger and larger every eruption. So it just has layers and layers and layers of lava cooling off and turning into red hot melted rock, which is magma. In some volcanoes, lava gently oozes out. Other volcanoes, it explodes. Lava, stone, and ash are thrown from the volcano's opening with tremendous force. Exploding volcanoes can quickly change the Earth's surface. So if you go back to that question in the beginning, it says this: these plants are now dead, and there's ash everywhere. Well, that's something that a volcano can do, and this can happen in an instant. It's real quick. In May 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted. First, there was an earthquake. Then the volcano began to spit out lava and ash. The eruption went on for nine hours. Nearly 379 square kilometers, or 230 miles, of forest was buried or blown down. And that's just from the explosion. So you can see here, this is what it looked like. It had snowy mountaintops right here. And then it started erupting. Look at that. There's this big hole right here. Where it exploded open. So this is all covered. And that little part. The volcano inside just blew it open. And left it with this. And all this down here is ruined. It was all grass and everything. I mean it's just. And that happened in nine hours. It changed the landscape that quickly. Before it erupted. Mount St. Helens in Washington State. Was 2,950 meters or 9,677 feet high. Many plants and animals lived on the mountain. So like here, it showed just real pretty snow top mountain. The eruption of Mount St. Helens sent more than 1 trillion pounds of ash across the United States. Many plants and animals that lived on the mountain died. Years later, the mountain is more than 305 meters, 1,000 feet lower. So it shrunk over 1,000 feet. But life has returned. The mountain again provides habitats for many different plants and animals. Look at the images above. Describe how Mount St. St. Helen has changed in the land around it. So we looked at those pictures. So one thing that happened is the mountain, that's just abbreviation, Mount Helen, I'm sorry, St. Helen, has shrunk H-R-U-N-K, over 1,000 feet. All right? So talk about how it changed. Well, when the lava and ash came out, it, it burned the ground and many plants and animals died. Which is what happens right here. Is we're using text information from the text. I know it's sad. It happened, this would be 39 years ago. Let's see, yeah, 1980 is what it said, in May. So this may be 39 years ago. So, But that's how it changed. Although now, it's almost 40 years later, the grass is starting to grow again and everything else. Animals are coming back, but still, it just took, what took in nine hours has taken 40 years to fix. That's, that's crazy. Nature is crazy. All right, big changes, fire, water, and mud. A little bit of fire, water, dirt can be very useful, but what if there's too much? A forest fire starts small. It can be sparked by lightning, a bit of lava, or a careless person. People have to act quickly to control forest fires. Remember, we did the Smokey the Bear. Too much rain in too short a period of time can cause a flood. A flood is a change that happens when streams, rivers, or lakes get too full and overflow entire towns can be destroyed 
Many plants may die, and animals may have to find new homes. Oh, goodness. Sorry. Oh. Over time, flood water drains away and dries up or is absorbed by the ground. So this is flood waters in Nashville, Tennessee. And that is, I would say, let's see, about the second story. So that means the water is about 20 feet high. It's pretty high for a city. That means that water will become above our school's roof. Sometimes water from rain or a flood loosens dirt on the side of a hill or mountain. The dirt slides downhill in a mudslide or landslide. It may bury part of a town. So, <laughs> here's a picture of this. All this was covered, and then the mud or landslide slid down, and you can see it covering some of these houses back here. Well, actually, you can't see the houses because they're buried. But you can see how this one's tilting back because the landslide got some of it. So this is do the math. All right, fun part. The Smith River overflows its banks after at least 30 centimeters of rainfall in one day. Rain is falling at 5 centimeters an hour. How long will it take to rain before the river overflows? Okay, so it has to rain at least 30 centimeters, and it's 5 centimeters per hour. So what times 5 is 30? Good job. Six. So the correct answer is six hours. It would take six hours before it would start overfl overflowing. Again, overflowing is bad. That's what causes floods. Whoops, a daisy. All right. Next, why it matters. So we usually don't do this part, but I thought this was interesting, especially since we can relate to the flooding. How do you prepare for a disaster? You make an emergency plan and prepare for your home. You make sure any pets will be safe too. People do many things to prepare for disasters. Buildings are designed to withstand earthquakes, which is true, especially in, Earth, in California now when they have a lot of earthquakes, they are designed where their buildings can actually move the earthquakes so they don't break down. The sides of rivers are built up to prevent floods. News reports let us know about the risk of forest fires. Radio, television, and the internet... <sighs> Okay. Warn us about storms and other emergencies. Emergency plans can help keep us safe. Families can talk about what to do in an emergency. A list like the one on the next page can help. It is best to prepare for the disaster before it strikes. Keeping supplies in your car can help you be ready. Because especially when flooding and bad storms are coming, people usually go to Walmart and buy all the bread and water. So here's a good checklist. And might, you want to show this to your parents to have in their back of their car. So have a first aid kit and some medicine because you don't know if there is a flood or something. Somebody gets a cut, the stores aren't going to be open. Same thing. You need food. You need clean water. So like bottled water or something from your faucet before it floods. Protective clothing and bedding or sleeping bags. A radio because internet will go down, but radio signals can go on forever. Flashlight, extra batteries, and evacuation guide. That just means a guide that you know, hey, we need to go here to get safe. You have a game plan. Okay, so packing to prepare. Draw and label some supplies that you would pack for emergency. So it gives you a whole bunch of stuff. But I want you to list at least five things you would bring for emergency. Okay, so I'm going to type that here. This isn't what's around the paper. I want you to I'm gonna put two, three, four, five. List five things you, ooh, this is thin. you would bring on, bring for an e emergency. So I'm not going to do this part. I mean, honestly, you can copy stuff from up here. Or you can just tell what kind of things you would rather bring instead. Because this is not concrete. But just give me some good things. And I want you to draw it, okay? So draw it. So if you say you're going to bring a phone, draw a little phone. If you're going to bring a potato, draw me some potatoes. I mean, I don't know what y'all are bringing. All right, this page. I want to go this with y'all, but I know y'all going to cheat anyway because the answers are there on the bottom. But right here, during storms, blank may ever overflow a river or lake. What would? Would lava overflow a river or lake? No, it wouldn't. Water would. This is called a flood. The water may blank away or dry up later. 
it may what? Drain. Okay. I w and I want you to draw, let's see. It says, use the words in the word bank to complete each group of sentences, then draw a line to match the sentences of the picture. So you know this is not a flood. This is not a flood. This is a flood. So draw a line to connect them. Melted rock called magma explodes the earth's surface and ash fills the sky. A volcano has erupted. The blank shakes when pieces of earth's crust push together. This is called a what? The what shakes? Ground shakes. When pieces of the earth's crust push together, this is called an earthquake. So then there's a line right there in the middle for that one. Okay. Now this does need to be complete and turned in. I'm not going over this with you. You need to complete pages 239 and 240. So right here is very simple. You can work with your partner. This is why you are sitting with people. Okay, so you don't have to do a solo. You can, but this is an easy 100 for you personally. So I suggest you take your time, get it done. It's easy 100. Y'all been doing good with the 100 so far this year. You know, it's only the third day of school. The words in red are, like it says, your vocabulary words. These here you should be able to get... Because we've gone over forest fires, magma, lava crust. I mean, honestly, count the sides. Like seven down has one, two, three, four boxes. So I'm going to read it. Melted rock that flows through onto Earth's surface is called lava, L-A-V-A. -A. So if you're listening, that's the answer. Okay. It says, describe how the named events might affect the environment shown. So a flood, what would it do to a tree? It would probably just come up to the top of the tree. For a building, it would probably come to that second floor and probably destroy most of that building. An earthquake, it probably knocked down the tree. Earthquake here, if that building's not in California where they build safe buildings, it probably tears it down. Forest fire, burn down the tree. Well, this isn't really a forest, but there's a tree here, so it would also could burn down the tree. It could burn down the building too if it's not made out of concrete. So just tell me what might happen for flooding here, earthquake, these two boxes, and fires, fire here. And seriously, it says talk to your family about the types of natural disasters that could occur in your area. Discuss some ways that you could better prepare for these. So the ones that only can really happen here, floods, which there are a couple of floods in certain parts of Mississippi over the break. And there could be forest fires, although it, since it rains so much here, that's a small chance. But with people not putting out their campfire or throwing things out the window, it could cause a fire. But I would like for you to discuss with your family what you would do if, say, I wish they had hurricanes and tornadoes on here. That would be something we can add next week. They might be able to do a tornado in a bottle and discuss that since it does change Earth's surface very quickly as well. All right, guys. So once you have that, Turn it into the teacher. I'm not sure who the sub is going to be. But tear that out. Put it on there. And then you are free to get on Quizlet or Dogo News if your iReady time is complete. All right. Good luck, guys. Ta-ta.